Hey everyone, my name is Darsh and welcome to Fremont Debate Academy. Today we're going to be talking about impact calculus. So to actually explain what impact calculus is, let's go over a brief review of impacting. So impacting is explaining why your argument matters on a larger scale and how it benefits society in the long term. So some common examples are life, poverty, or war. Basically anything that gives your impact and your contention something, some sort of meaning. So life, poverty, and war are sort of these big concepts, but in the end of the day, they give, the, they give a meaning to your contention itself. So two-world analysis is just a fancy term explaining how you compare the two sides of a debate. It's talking about the positive effects in your world and the negative effects in your opponent's world. And a good way to think about worlds is scenarios. So let's say the topic is that schools should ban homework. Well, your world, if your proposition, is that schools have banned homework. What happens then? You're comparing the positive effects of banning homework, and your opponent's world would be when they have not banned homework. And so you'd be comparing the negative effects of not banning homework to the positive effects of banning homework. So it's just a fancy term for comparing the two impact sides. So after sort of this review of impact, we'll go more in depth into impact analysis. So there's three main parts to impact analysis. The first is probability. So the probability is the chance of an impact occurring. That's pretty simple. The magnitude is the extent, seriousness, or reversibility of an impact. And we'll go more in depth into these three specific things in a later slide. Finally, time frame is when the impact will happen. When you're presenting your voter issues or the reasons why you should be winning the debate, especially in the last speech, explain why you're winning on this PMT, probability magnitude time frame analysis. Oftentimes, an impact cannot have all three of them, so you have to pick. For example, nuclear war has a high magnitude because it could kill every single person on the planet, but a low probability because it's very, very unlikely that countries will actually use their nuclear weapons. Job loss, on the other hand, has a high probability but a low magnitude because it might not, it has, it's a, it happens in the status quo, but it might not affect a whole bunch of people at the exact same time compared to something like nuclear war, which could affect every single person on the planet. So you should be clarifying what the judge should prioritize based off of which impact you have. And a good debater will always be able to make it so that their impact is going to be the one that's prioritized on top of their opponents. Okay, so more in depth on PMT analysis. So probability is, again, how likely your impacts will occur. A higher probability means the impact is more important because, again, it's more likely to happen. If it's happening right now, that means there's a 100% probability because there's already proof that it can happen and will continue to happen, which means it's a 100% probability impact. You can use that when you talk about something like global warming, when you can say heating is happening in the status quo and it's getting hotter and hotter. So we're going to expect it to increase with a 100% probability in the future if we do not change it and solve for it right now. The second part is magnitude. So the magnitude is the extent, seriousness, or reversibility of an impact. For example, a low magnitude impact would be 50 people losing their jobs, but a high magnitude impact would be nuclear war with all 7.5 billion people on this planet being wiped out. So one key thing to note is reversibility is also a part of magnitude, and the reason why is because reversibility is how likely it is that the impact can be switched off once it's happened. Take something like global warming. It's really unlikely that once global warming happens, we'll be able to reverse that back to the conditions we have right now, which means global warming not only affects every single person on the planet today, but it could affect every single person on the planet going forward for the entirety of like time. So reversibility is a huge part of magnitude because it could affect a whole bunch of people going forward. You can also tie this into poverty cycle, talking about how it's almost impossible to reverse po uh, poverty once it's happened to someone. Okay, and the third thing we're going to talk about is time frame. So again, short-term impacts will occur in the near future. Long-term impacts are usually higher magnitude, but there's a gradual change over an extended period of time. You leverage time frame by saying something is going to be happening sooner, and therefore that should be prioritized above things that are happening later. For example, again, we keep coming back to global warming because that's a really strong impact to talk about. You can set a timeline. You can say by 2025, global warming will be irreversible and will affect a whole bunch of people. That's going to be sooner than my opponent's impacts and as a result because of time frame global warming is the more important impact to consider because it has to be dealt with first so that's sort of how you leverage a time frame impact okay so now let's talk about prioritizing or how you pick one part of an impact over another comparing between probability magnitude and time frame okay so prioritizing probability 
The best way to think about this is via the lens of efficient policy making. When we focus on problems that are likely to happen, we are using our resources wisely, with sort of doomsday policy making being a really bad thing because high magnitude impacts are inherently going to be unpredictable. So what this basically means is we shouldn't be thinking about these really unpredictable impacts. Instead, we should be focusing on the impacts that we know can happen, that have a high probability and that are already affecting people. That's the best way to use our resources that have to go into making a decision. Another thing you can talk about is how the world hasn't yet ended yet. So talking about these doomsday policy making decisions isn't necessary because the world itself hasn't stopped. You can really use this in terms of a nuclear war impact because during the Cold War era, there's a much higher risk of nuclear weapons being used and killing a whole bunch of people. The world didn't end then, so why should we be prioritizing a high magnitude nuclear war impact over a sort of normal probability impacts like job loss in the status quo because the world didn't end in the past. Okay, then prioritizing magnitude. An interesting way to look at it is sort of breaking down what risk means to people. Risk is equal to magnitude times probability, and so extinction, for example, has an infinite magnitude and a low probability, but infinity times any small decimal is still going to be infinity, which means the risk is infinite. A way to think about this is if there's a 1% chance that 10 million people are going to die, you're going to do everything you can to stop that 1% chance from happening because you know the risk is so huge. So you can argue that high magnitude impacts can also be probable. For example, with global warming, there's a lot of statistics and evidence that show that this high magnitude impact can and will happen if we don't do something about it. The same thing can be applied to nuclear war impacts. They are very improbable, but you can bring a whole bunch of statistics and evidence to overwhelm the other side and convince the judge that there's a good chance that they're going to happen. Okay, the last way, the last thing you can do is prioritize time frame. You can talk about which impact happens first. It's especially useful for economic impacts that can say that tomorrow, if we don't pass this plan, we're going to have this many jobs laid off and that's going to affect this many people. Solving one problem now can also solve many problems in the future. So if you solve a short term problem, it links to more future impacts that are going to be positive and good result of your side of the argument. Okay, now let's go over two world analysis what it is and how it ties into PMT analysis. So two-word analysis is again just comparing your world with your opponent's world or the two scenarios and seeing how one is more important than the other. So you weigh your impacts with your opponent's impacts and use PMT to show how yours is more important than your opponent's. Use whichever PMT part that you are winning on to show how it's more prioritized than your opponent's. Make sure not to entirely discount your opponent's case though. If you say their entire case doesn't matter, your judge will immediately be like, wait, they have impacts of their own. Why are you downplaying their case so much? So make sure to actually give some credit to them while not giving them too much credit and making it clear that you win in the comparison. You want to paint a picture, tell a story, and develop it using PMT analysis. So it shouldn't just be, I win because this impact is more probable and probability is more important, therefore this is the end of the debate. You need to paint the picture, tell a story with your impacting, which is something you should already be doing, and add PMT on top of it in the two-world analysis. Okay, hope that was helpful. Thank you for watching. Like and subscribe for more content.